G'day everyone, welcome to New Tech, my name is Miles and it's wonderful to have you here. In today's video we're going to be checking out this brand new 3D printer by Two Trees called the SK1, so stay tuned. I've had the opportunity to review a couple of the other machines by Two Trees. So that was their laser machine, their 20 watt laser machine, and also their CNC machine. And I was thoroughly impressed with those machines and they did exactly what I wanted them to do. So I couldn't ask for anything more with their machines. But the other thing that they also did is provided everything that needed to be with the machine. So I didn't have to source anything extra. So I was really excited in reviewing their 3D printer. Now this one here is the SK1. This one is a certainly comparison with the K1 Creality high-speed printer plus maybe the P1P. Now this one does have the same print volume as most printers and it also goes up to about 700 millimeters per second. Now that is crazy fast and I was really excited to give this a go and see what it could do. So first of all, getting it out of the box, it was no problem at all. Uh, it is quite heavy and I think that's to do with obviously the rigidity of the frame but I think they've also added some extra weight at the bottom of this just to make sure that this stays where it needs to stay because this moves so quickly. So after taking it out of the box it was really easy to put together. I just had to unscrew a couple of the clamps on the X and Y axis then I had to put uh, the screen on and it was really quite painless in putting those things together. I plugged it in and well off it went. So I was really happy with the assembly stage. It really only took a few minutes to take out of the box and put together. Compared to a lot of other machines that I reviewed in the past, this was probably the easiest one to put together. My first impressions with using it was it was really hard to fault. I couldn't get it to fail a print and I was really impressed that that was the out of box experience. So this style of printer does come with like a Bamboo lab style extruder, which is really exciting. Comes with a, a proximity sensor for the Z probe. It also comes with a really nice LED strip. So it's super easy to see things when you're printing. But I also love the touch that they've included. There are some really cool features that are on that touch screen that you can have access to, but in the background, they're actually running Clipper on this machine, which makes things a lot easier and a lot more customizable with this machine itself. So compared to a couple of the other machines out there on the market where you can't really customize it, you don't have the flexibility over changing certain parameters or calibrating the machine, this one here gives you the opportunity to have a full experience with a 3D printer. Printer. And that's what I really love because I like the ability to have the flexibility and also to change things and make things better. And so that's what I did here with most of my prints. So I started off my prints with a simple benchy. There was a pre-sliced benchy here and it was really exciting because I could actually see the preview of the print on the LED screen. So it was really exciting to see that they have implemented some type of visuals with that. And I did my first print and I was so excited to see the first print. Now, the first Benji came out and um, it came out almost flawlessly, but there was some slight inconsistencies, especially with the surface area. So what I did then is went through a calibration stage. So it uses the input shaper to help calibrate through the vibration of the machine to make things a lot smoother. It also does a really great bed mesh leveling as well. Um, so it can save all that data automatically and you don't really have to do a lot. Now, unfortunately, the, the setup through Cura that they provide on a USB probably took the longest part to get my head around, but once you have had it all set up and all the profiles ready to go, it was super easy to put together and then printing was an absolute dream after that. So after I did all the calibrations, I went ahead and did another test print. Now I had this sitting on my table at home and the table did wobble just a slight amount, but because of the speed that this is going at, my table was absolutely shaking. So the way that I thought about improving that was actually taking off and putting it on the floor. And I was really surprised because I got a slightly better print on the surface quality after I moved the printer from the table and placed it on the floor where there was absolutely no movement around. So just make sure when you're using a printer, especially a high speed printer, that the surface that you put it on is so important because it does contribute to the inertia of that moving head as well. Now I did want to put it through some tests and see what it could do and what it couldn't do. So the first thing that I did was I put a basic vase in which changed shape quite often and this came out beautifully. Now I did stop it halfway just because I didn't need the full vase, but it gave me enough information that I could say that that was an absolute success of a print. It's uh, quite interesting because it's quite flexible um, and the surface area is beautiful. So I'm really impressed with this. I also did a tolerance test as well. 
Now this came out really nicely. I think that um, it did have a bit of drippiness about over 70 degrees or so. It did have a slight issue at the 60 degree point, but all in all, everything came out really impressive um, using this print. Um, and as I was doing a lot of these prints, I noticed that there was some slight bulging of the corners. So I did change a couple of settings just to make sure that those uh, were tied down, but it really wasn't much that I had to do extra through Clipper. I did go and uh, print this little uh, dinosaur. I really loved him because it was quite complex and quite intricate. Made sure that I could figure out if the retractions on this machine could handle it. Um, and it did a fantastic job. Now there is some slight rough inconsistencies within the print, but I did put this on the basic settings, so the absolute fastest print profile. And if that's what I'm getting out of the fastest print profile, you know, I'm really impressed because it can only go upwards from there. And lastly, I did uh, 3D print this little robot. It certainly shows off what this printer is capable of. So this is a little print in place robot. Um, he comes with some pre-sliced supports and he was certainly a fantastic tolerance test for this style of machine. So I was really impressed that I could push this machine to its limits and it never failed, not once. Once. But I did then want to try something a little bit more exotic in this and I did throw in some flexible TPU Now that's when things started to take a slight turning point because obviously the gears that they have inside this um, Printer there was a slight gap inside there. I can't see what's in there So it's very hard to tell exactly what's happening But I did notice that the TPU did get caught in those gears and stopped it extruding because it then jammed up all the gears So taking it out was certainly a, a bit of a challenge um, I firstly thought, well, I might take it out by um, taking the Bowden tube out, but that was really hard to do because it was stuck behind this panel. So I had to try and take the panel off and that's stuck in there because the Bowden tube's in there. So it was all a bit of a complex puzzle. But um, at the end of the day, I was able to pull on that TPU and hit the unload button and it finally came out. I've got a feeling that it has a lot to do with this tensioning screw just on the side of the extruder head. Now that's probably one of the flaws that I did find with this machine is there's not a whole lot of documentation to tell you what everything does on this machine. It's only a very young machine, it's just been released. Um, so there's still a lot of documentation that's yet to come out. There's some quirks with the LCD screen that need to be sorted out because um, it's very hard to read. Um, they're sometimes in a different language or that doesn't show things correctly. But all of that stuff is software issues that can be updated over air. And I'm really impressed with the basic machine, the, the structure, it's well created, everything is, is well aligned. Um, and I don't think that I would ever have any issues specifically with the structure of the machine. Um, I did find that the belts were slightly bit loose compared to my Bamboo X1 Carbon. And that's something that I might be able to tighten up over time just to improve the print quality of things. But overall they have done a fantastic job with this machine. The SK1 is certainly a massive contender with the other printers that are out there. And I look forward to seeing how it evolves and how it develops over time. It does look like they've got some screw holes on the side, back, front, and also on the top to mount some side panels and a door later on. And also in their ads, they also say that they've got an AI camera that might be released with this machine too. So it looks like there is a lot of functionality and a lot of flexibility with this machine and it's really fantastic to see a machine in its infancy is about to grow and flourish into something that's really amazing. So I've absolutely loved reviewing this machine and I look forward to seeing what else it can do. If you like this machine, you want to buy it, I've got the links down below, um, but there's also a whole lot of other reviews out there at the moment. So feel free to go and check them out, but I appreciate you watching. And if you have liked this video, feel free to subscribe, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.